And folks, you don't have to be even watching Talking Racine to, to, to see what's going on. Just look at what's going on. They are playing politics all the time. They come in with these programs. They come in with these staff members. They come in with a, a $250,000 car to get out the vote. They are, they are yeah. not thinking in terms of letting the economy no, grow. They're thinking they're thinking <laughs> Why are these guys laughing? Who cares? We're George Meyer, Jim Spodick, and Ken Jorgen, and we're back with Talking Racine. We are here. Yeah, and it was a it was a funny moment. You should have been here. <laughs> anyway, uh, the thing we're going to talk about today, we're going to kick it off with the proposed referendum. We got another referendum coming up. Ta-da! Spend more money. On November. Spend more November third. Spend more money. Uh, there you go. That's the spirit, George. <laughs> you ought to be on the city council yeah, with that man. attitude, because by God, that's what they decided to do. Is they they came out in favor of putting this referendum up to the vote, and it's like, well, it's empowering the people. It's giving people a voice. To spend more in taxes. Oh. That's that's what they're giving you the Give chance. Give her some of that money that you've been trying to hide all this time. Yeah, you know, they're giving you the chance to approve of them spending more money because the state roll. the state has locked it down. You can right. uh, the tax levy can only be so high, and we're yeah. there, yeah. and we've done everything that we can do no to raise way more for taxes. No way to yeah. Key, yes, I mean, we've got these TIF key. districts. We've got all these yeah. these mechanisms by which they're extracting more money out of the taxpayers, but now they're saying, well, we don't have any other place to go other than to ask them directly, can we have some more money? We'd like to spend another 6.5% beyond what we're legally allowed to do. Which, and which takes us to uh, the executive meeting, which uh, we, <laughs> we, we, we're we going to kind of review oh, a little no. bit. Why don't so we, we watch back, a back bit to reality. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's, <laughs> let's see what Actually, the they brought up numbers, which is very <clears throat> rare uh, a lot of times, you know, when he actually brought up some real numbers. There were some questions that well, let's get into it. Yeah. Um, what would the impact be on a standard taxpayer, let's say a $100,000 home? So this is about a 6.5% increase. It would be about a $96 increase a year on a $100,000 home. Oh, the big question is, is not so much how much more money are they going to get from us? How much more do they want? The big question is, what are we getting for this? Yeah. How does how is our taxation rate compared to most other communities, well, in the area and around the state? Do we pay more or do we pay less? Oh, we pay substantially more. Substantially we pay more, more than double. Of, more than double. Of, of and we'll get into that in here, too, which they actually bring up. Of course, it doesn't phase anyone. Well, how know. come we don't have twice as good a living well, standard? <laughs> Yeah, that, we pay, that's the question, really. Yeah, actually, on here it says 14, uh, the levy is $14.93, I believe. I believe anywhere between Caledonia and Mount Pleasant, it's between 6 and 8%, or 6 and 8 I don't know what you just said. All I know is they're asking for more money. Yeah, but we pay the... Our, our tax pay. levy is somewhere around 14.5%, is what she said. And not 14.93. 14, 14, 14, 14. 14. Nine three. Yeah, a percentage around there. 50, 50. In other words, that's the rate that we're taxed at. It's like a sales tax. You know, you pay a percentage of the sales tax. Well, this is a, a, a tax rate that we pay, and it's double what, more than double of what's being paid by Mount Pleasant. And I say, who cares? If we're getting good service and we got a safe and, you know, enjoyable community, it's worth it. But that isn't what we have. No. That's not what we have. And they want to get into, uh, well, basically they want to pay the retirees. The well, that's, what they're, that's yeah. what they're putting it off on. Right. They're saying, you know, they got all of these things, and what do they single out as the thing that's going to cost more is the retirees' health benefit. And that was very evident throughout that whole hearing. Uh, the, Catherine Fisher, who you just heard there, who was the acting city administrator, administrator uh, saying that, this is something that continues to go up. And the question went up, well, is it going to keep going up forever? And her only comment was, well, it's going to continue to go up at different rates. Sometimes it might be really bad, and sometimes it might be really okay. And, and she entered, She also said, uh, it's the private market that's fault, that, that, that's what's causing all this problem. It has nothing to do with the city or... No. Or you know the way they're spending money. Well, they're laying it off on the health care yeah, costs. Yeah, on the health care costs. Yeah. You know, I mean, they they always sing. You know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, See, that's an easy target. Give me the candy bar. The yeah. puppy dies. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, I'm going to play a little more because right. now we got to get into um, the retirees. And, uh, you know, uh, John Tate, I was a little surprised. Why are, the, you know, these retirees don't contribute to the community any longer? You know, why are we paying them? Listen to this. Because you get a contract. Yeah, maybe. Revenue is relatively staying flat, and almost half of our health care costs are going to people who no longer provide a service to the citizens of Racine. People are paying their taxes, expecting a service in, re in response in general, um, yet 50% of the health care, almost 50%, 44%, I think you said, Kathleen, of the health care expenditures are going to folks who no longer provide that particular service to the citizens. And I think it's only fair, particularly for the folks who've lived in Racine, who've seen these taxes increase in general, and have had no say so um, in terms of whether they're contributing to you know, any one particular health care to actually have a say this time around and say, do I want to continue to pay um, particularly for that thing or not? I think it's, you know, when we talk about Racine being a, you know, city that has, you know, high rates of poverty, um, uh, half of its population are black and brown. Um, and these are folks who oftentimes are contributing in the tax base to the health care benefits of, you know, many retirees who no longer live in the city of Racine, no longer necessarily contribute directly to the city. Um, now folks are like, well, what am I getting out of this? Um, and they're paying for someone else's health care who no longer is providing. Oh, us. yeah, that's it. They're paying for health care. What about, let's, maybe we could cut in some other areas. Now, we hear that uh, there's a, a quarter of a million dollars being spent on a get-out-the-vote bus. Just bought that from Burlington RV. A quarter of a million dollars. That's I bought a camper for 2500 bucks. Why don't you put a picture of that up? You know, all you got to do is put the awning out, put a table down there, and put register to vote, hang a, hang a banner up there. And for 2500 bucks, you know, you can go out and get out to vote. You don't have to have a quarter of a million dollar RV that's going to be used how often? How and what? When does it get? What is it used for? The Corey Mason, Rebecca Mason uh, getaway. Oh um, my God! Anyway, let's get back to, to to Tate because I mean I think some of the things he brought up was, you have a contract, John, that that is binding, and you have retirees that actually work for the city who have retired, and those costs are part of the operations of your city, and it has to function with the cost of that uh, re retirees. And to downplay them like they have no worth is really what I read out of it. I don't know what you guys read. Almost yeah. like these retirees are second re well, place citizens. We ain't getting nothing from these people yeah, anymore. get them out. You know, let's throw some COVID at them and see if we can get them out of here. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. this is the kind of mentality you've got in, in City Hall. I don't care for that type of mentality. When you created a contract, oh, things change with contracts. Well, let's go to court and see how, how that contract holds up, you know, because i got a funny feeling it's going to hold up. And to go to the taxpayers and ask for a 6.5% levy increase, I think is totally unjust to be able to do that. Live within your budget. You're, you're double the rate of the other uh, communities, yeah, and you still means. can't cover the uh, rate of this. It's called poor management is what it's called. So, John Tate, um, you really owe an apology to these uh, retirees. And what about these talking about, well, we're going to have to cut services if this thing doesn't go through. Because yeah, we're That's legally right. obligated to pay these health care costs, so we're going to have to cut services. What kind of services are you talking about cutting? You're talking about, thing. talking about cutting that quarter Black of a million dollar Black and brown bus? people. They also retire. They, uh, you know, and the other thing is you're going to lay a, a levy on the poor that you're talking about are costing these uh, uh, retirees. What, what are you doing? You're laying just as much on them. Like, there you have to pay. They didn't get away without it. I mean, man, oh, man, this guy is completely out of, out of, out of realm. Well, I, you know, I've mentioned the bus a couple of times. How about the five-person mayoral staff? Yeah. That's you know, that's got to cost a couple of bucks. Five people, some have said six. And there used to be one person was the mayor's staff. Now yeah. we got five. Oh, and, you know, I mean, look, look at this. 900000 for the Foxconn jobs. I mean, where do you want to go? We can keep going. I mean, they. Well, look at so this legislative money. report that we got. This thing is so poorly written. You, don't, you, you, you can't even figure out what the hell he's saying. And, and this is like. The legislative report is a report on what the referendum will be. And it's just trying to yeah. explain the referendum, and it, 
really, it's a, it's a full page. I don't know if that's what's actually going to be on the ballot or not. If it's going, if that, it fits if that. that's a reference, it better be. Where is that in the newspaper? What what day is that? This one about the um, about the about this article right here. What what did, what's the date here? That's uh, August twentieth, Thursday. Thursday. Get Thursday's paper. Read that article, and I challenge you to figure out what in the hell it says. The, I can't figure it out. No. You couldn't figure it. We were arguing back and forth what they actually well, well, meant. Yeah, it's a, it's a very very it's a confusing statement. It it, it it either means they're asking for three and a half million dollars the first year, and then one million dollar a year after. Every year after that, or they're talking about three and a half million the first year and four, four and, and a half million, million every, every year, year after. thereafter. So it, and that's what I got my money on. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, my money on the four yeah, and a half million. Yeah, yeah because I, the one million doesn't make much sense when it comes to budgetary. But Thursday number. front page, go read it. Yeah, uh, the. The the thing is, is there, it, it, like you pointed out, Doc, it's mismanagement of money is the basic thing. That this oh. this group over there is very politically oriented. They they, they are a bunch of you know d Democrats. They, let's face it, they are. But Corey Mason bragged about being the only Democrat in the race, so it's not like we're bringing up something that he, they aren't promoting. But and, and we've seen uh, the guy you have on the screen right now, Trevor Young. You know he's he's uh, hugging um, Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. I don't care who right. he hugs as long the as it makes point. sense she, in government. She, 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 she's, yeah, she's running for vice president of the Democrat Party. So it's like, you know, they're over there messing around with this with this city and its finances and playing politics, just a horrible game of politics with it, instead of getting down and actually, you know, doing budgetary thinking with it and what gets things done. And to spend, a, it's, what is it, a half a million dollars at least every year just on a campaign staff for the mayor, and no one says a thing about it. No. Well, not only, yeah. not only a campaign staff, he's also got, now he's got a, a $250,000 RV to go out and get out the vote. Well, get out the vote, why? Because nobody's going to vote for you unless you get out there and hassle and hustle. And he's going to be street. getting out voted for himself. He's yeah. not, not going to be, yeah. doesn't just get out the vote, just get out voters for me. You know what I'm interested in? I'm interested in seeing uh, what kind of an increase there is in the number of people who vote after that bus is put into operation. No. You know, and then calculate that uh, that quarter million dollars divided by the number of people that actually show up that wouldn't have shown up before. You can do that very simply by just doing the numbers, numbers yeah. and find out how much it costs per vote. You get 2,500 people. What is that, $100 a piece? Yeah. Well, I bet you could get a lot of voters to show up if you just gave out $100 a piece. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, the, the technique is you leave the cigarettes and a, and a little... Uh, a little bottle of uh, on the dashboard. But, but the thing is, give them right. yeah. they, they should be more worried about keeping the streets cleaned up and prepared, and and the, and the police out there, and and doing things that actually runs the government, not politicking, not getting out to vote, not not uh, um, raising hell with the the landlords or something like that, you know, or or putting in Green New Deal type of stuff for every new building, every new expensive structure that comes up. Hey, it's many, okay two, to encourage that, but to mandate it? Yeah, yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Why we have nothing. Listen, I want to play uh, Tr Trevor here because he does actually bring up some questions. Now, this is the first time. Now, does he really believe what he's asking or is it just another political thing? Because down the road, when you start laying on a levy onto poor people in Racine, um, it, it will come back and haunt you. So, I mean, is it really going to be that he's really concerned or is it a political play to say, hey, I can't vote for this because politically it's disaster down the road. This kid wants to move up in a political circle. So let's just take a quick look at him. Uh, what is the percentage in the overall budget in terms of health care costs for the city of Racine? So health care costs make up about 25% of our budget. 25% of the budget. Okay. So that's, that's the operating budget tax. Great, thank you. And so, from uh, so looking at that, that obviously comes in large part, obviously from shared revenue, but also property taxes. So, what is our current property tax rate? The rate or the levy? Uh, the levy. The levy. Excuse me. The levy is currently. I think the rate is fourteen ninety three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think the rate is fourteen. The rate is fourteen ninety three. The mayor is correct. The tax and levy is. Fifty-three million eight hundred and twenty thousand two hundred and thirty. But I'm going to caveat that a little bit. Okay. There is there is an amount in there of about sixteen million eight hundred that is for debt service only. 
So really your operating levy is about $37 million. I'm going off the top of my head, so bear with me, but it's about $37 million. Very good, very good. So in terms of- Healthcare costs are covered within that $37 million. Thank you, perfect. So in, in terms of our neighboring communities, you know, we've talked about our rate being 14.93. Uh, um, just ballpark, do we know where Mount Pleasant's rate is, where Caledonia's rate is in comparison? But between six and nine. Yeah, the mayor probably knows better than I, mean, I do. Roughly, I mean, without having the numbers in front of me, I, I mean, ours are more than double our uh, our neighbors. I asked the questions about health care, and then I asked the questions about our tax rate in comparison to our neighbors is because I think that they are very much interconnected. Because the way that we're going to make sure that we have a sustainable funding of benefits for current employees and retired is by growing the base of our economy. And one of the biggest challenges that we have associated with our growth is that we are at a competitive disadvantage in terms of the rate that we have in comparison to our neighbors. So I have concern over uh, there being a possibility of raising that rate 6.5%, even if it is the judgment of the taxpayer to do that to themselves. Because in the long run, that puts us in the same situation that we've been uh, for decades in the past, which is at a competitive disadvantage where we see private investment and tax base is growing in other municipalities while the city of Racine is left behind with a higher rate. Well, I think he brings up some good points. Well, and, and that's exactly the exactly the problem is that we are not growing as a city, whereas the other communities are. And and here's one of the fundamental things that he's really making a big error. And I see a lot of politicians doing this up and down the line, state, federal, local, is they think they are growing the economy, and that's just not the way it works in an economy or in a free country, particularly. The government just has to get out of the way and make it possible for the economy to grow. So, so the people from the uh, economy, the people in that country or city, whatever it is, they're the ones that make it grow, not the government. The government just makes it so that bad elements don't come in and, you know, creates are, a safe environment. Are, are, are burning, yeah, burning yeah. buildings and this type of stuff uh, are coming in and making it hard to run business. So he's right in that. Uh, the city needs to grow, and the, that's the problem: is we are not growing. And but he's he's wrong, and when he thinks that he's the one that's going to make it grow, because he's not going to make it grow, just get out of the way. And the problem is, is they won't get out of the way. Uh, the, the 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 rules and regulations and the, and the restrictions put on people. And once you get into business, it's harder and heck to keep it going because you've uh, people governing the government crawling around. And I've them, seen you got to wear a mask or you got to have your door closed right, or something right. like and I've that. I've seen them on committees where they just oh, ladle on restrictions on a lot of these businesses. So yeah, economic base. That's right, Trevor. But the fact is, you're on a committee. Uh, planning and zoning or whatever it is um, that I've seen uh, multiple. Uh, re it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's the first one I went to, folks, I, w I was I was shocked. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I I did not realize. I mean, a guy's trying to open up a restaurant and he's got to show where he's setting the tables. Yeah. Yeah. And the restaurant. I, I mean, it's just what crazy. What the heck is that all so, about? And in the economic <laughs> environment we're in now, <laughs> we're going to see some real <laughs> problems, and uh, Racine's going to get hit very hard. Uh, you know, when this this money all of a sudden starts to. Uh, evaporate and it will at some point you know one of the funny things i think is that you have the city giving loans and and grants to these businesses but yet then coming in and taxing them uh six and a half percent uh to get that money back so it's like this recycling but we government ends up back with the money so it's it's a bad bad uh, 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 referendum. No, I, not I, I, inf yeah, this is one that, we, <coughs> you want to kill a city? This is the way you do it. The more you tax, the less you get. I, I, you got the clip where John Tate comes up and says we're landlocked. That's yeah. the excuse. Okay. Okay. We, we need to, this yeah. is a real good follow-up to what we're just talking about, about letting the economy grow. All right. We are at our limits, um, physically and levy-wise. So I think when we talk about growth, we want to be careful to make sure that we're you know, being real, when we talk about growth, we're literally talking about growing within a constricted space. Um, and that's that's limited. And that generally reflects upon what revenue you can generate in the space that you have. <laughs> now, 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 here's here. <laughs> it's really fun. He, he's, you know, he's saying there's no place to expand. We've reached our limit. 
<laughs> you know, and, and, and wait a minute, John. What 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 is all that? We vacant, got vacant land all over oh, town. Oh, yeah, vacant land along the river there. There used to be buildings there. It's all vacant land. What's it, what up, 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 up out there on 21st Street where uh, Jacobson used to be? There's mm -hmm. land all over the place. There's empty stores all over the place. There's empty lots all over the place for houses, for stores, for factories. We have a lot of room to grow. They don't have a plan. What their plan is to just keep extracting taxes from those. From that's all. That's all. And, and that's the, stay in yeah. power. And stay keep in your power. power going. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Which, which the city will die under this administration. <laughs> your room here, and not only that, but you know some of the really big, big cities and stuff. You know what they're doing when they ran out of uh, room? They went up. Right. You know, and <laughs> there's and a so, lot of things. So there's a do. there's a immense amount of room and to here, grow in here's this town. the other thing nobody so thinks about this is the changing environment of business, the changing environment of work at home. I mean, that could be a whole aspects that Racine could really tackle and really take a look at that and really kind of think think out a little See, further. But thing, they don't uh, think that way. Well, they don't. Yeah. And, and and folks, you don't have to be even watching Talking Racine to. to see what's going on. Just look at what's going on. They are playing politics all the time. They come in with these programs. They come in with these staff members. They come in with a, a $250,000 car to get out the vote. They are, they are yeah. not thinking in terms of letting the economy no, what grow. They're thinking, they're thinking in if, terms yeah. of politics and maintaining and if their power structure. you get this referendum passed, you're going to lose services. It's you that's yeah, going to yeah. suffer. Grandma and Grandpa aren't going to get any health care. No. Yeah. And all their yards yeah. are going to go to hell. And it's it's going to I, I think it's going, to take, it's going to take a clean sweep, if not of the they people, at least of out. their mentality. They've got to get out of this uh, political mode and get into the mode of just keeping the peace. You know, let business grow. Let the business and their customers decide what's best for them. And, and, and it will grow. And there's plenty of room for it. Well, you know what? We got to move on. Well, yeah. Yeah, speaking but of we're, politics, we're against this this thing happening. <laughs> yeah. you know, we're def we're all if, if, solidly if, against if, passing if this you, referendum. If folks, if if the people out there pass this referendum, all they're doing is they are acknowledging the correctness of this political game that they're playing in City Hall. They're just saying, "Yeah, you guys are doing fine. We'll give you another three and a half million dollars towards your efforts." Well, there's a psychological year. term for this. It's uh, enabling. Enabling, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. No, it, that, that, that's all. That's all. This referendum will be a real good test of whether the people are done with this type of politics being played at City Hall. Okay, uh, well, let's move on from that, and then let's just make a mention of the uh, Zarian case uh, mm -hmm. right now, because we thought by now we would. Well, we figured last Monday yeah, we might we possibly a have a uh, a decision from the judge, Judge Freder Fredrickson. And uh, that hasn't happened yet. Now, it, it may happen as early as today or sometime this week, but we're looking forward to seeing whether or not he's going to rule and say this this can, complaint can continue. We're going to go on uh, and and schedule a trial for this and decide who owes who what money and so on and so forth. Right. But right now, I don't know. We're kind of overdue. Well, I, I don't think you know. I I don't think it's a really difficult thing to see that. Sam Mazarian was getting screwed. Yeah. I mean, you know, he he, no. he he was jacked around and lied to, and the result was that he, you know, he, he didn't get certain uh, uh, compensation for having moved. Well, that wasn't everything. bad enough. I mean, they, they should have helped them move, relocate. They should have paid all those expenses and got them set up in a new location. But they added insult to injury by going over there where they did relocate their business and coming down on them with all kinds yeah. of crappy regulations. Yeah. That's our asshole when he was moving. Yeah. yeah I mean, that, that, just what we've been talking about before. So Trevor know, Young, that, by the way, was on that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you're talking about economic growth. There you are, Trevor. Yeah, yeah. There, you you know, know, I mean, some, it, 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 it's amazing. But there is something. I, I think taking this long, maybe there's more to this, and maybe there's more that's going on behind the scenes. Or Well, that's what I, wanted, I was getting to, is, is that I, I think, I, I don't think, it, at least from my observation, that, that, that he was getting jacked around and the case should go on. But this judge is a really good judge, you yeah. know, when you when you listen yep. to him. And this, yep. this guy is very, he just got kind of knocked in the head over another really easy one yes. where, where the health department was overreaching and closing businesses down and, and wrecking the economy and destroying people's lives. And he made a very good decision. He's saying, got an opinion on this? <laughs> <laughs> and that's very easy. He made a very good decision. He's saying, that's not okay. Quit it. 
But yeah. he, but boy, did they in, in super super human uh, <laughs> fashion, he got With, overturned within a, a hours. miraculous yeah within hours in, in a time yes. in record time. It's what you're going to Guinness Book of Records. Yeah. How fast how fast can the judges get it? Uh, it's almost like somebody overturned like, an appellate like drove up there and lobbied the judge. Yeah, yeah. something, something it, like that. Could go that yeah. fast? Yeah. Enough? Because yeah. I mean, didn't they have to sign something up there in, in Madison? The, hey, how did I mean? How did it even get up there? <laughs> it got up fast. Got it got, got up there. Got yeah. fast, man. So, so the point was is that when you, when you've just been through something like that, you might be not quite ready to say, "Well, this case is pretty obvious too." But gee whiz, am I going to face the same dang thing as I just did in that last easy case? You know, I mean, he could yeah. be. He could be. And, and it's a political structure once again. It, it's it's a thing where you would like to see things just happen in a nice, calm, sane political environment, but it's not there. That environment's no. not there. It's a crazy. It's yeah. a crazy world right now. So, yeah. so anyway, well, that, we'll that might be what's holding it up. I don't know. Yeah. Well, we'll look into it some more. Uh, speaking of looking into it some more, you know, I've been kind of tracking the the results between Racine and Kenosha uh, in terms of the the COVID pandemic and what's going on with uh, the the number of fatalities, the number of sicknesses. I actually kind of abandoned that project this week, and when I heard that. Uh, Kenosha now, they went from 60 deaths a couple of weeks ago to 59 last week. Now they're back up to 60. Yeah, he found them. So <laughs> somebody died again. I mean, yeah. I'm, the, the statistics are just, yeah. they, they don't reveal it. Here, here. Unified, uh, the, the Kenosha Unified has opened up their schools. Yeah, they opened up their so schools. So that, that, you know, I mean, and here's one of the things that they did do, though. Down in Kenosha, the parents went and protested the school board in Kenosha. Actually went out with signs and you know had a little go around. Yeah. Uh, at maybe, the maybe, 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 maybe Racine parents need to yeah. do the same thing if you really you know, want I mean, the schools open. Pitchforks and torches. Right? You know, and I also yeah. heard that the unified. Now this is some stuff that came to us. Uh, you know, and I haven't quite verified any of it, but a lot of students and there's some real upheaval in the unified mm -hmm. Racine unified where kids are. Parents are saying, hey, if we had enough of Unified, we're going to go to some of the choice schools, private schools outside of the Unified District. I mean, things, are, things aren't as all that well in the Unified I, schools. And I have heard the same thing going on nationwide. And there, there is a, a massive abandonment of the, of the closed-down schools, yeah. and, and, and parents are going into more into the private schools and getting that thing. And one of the things that's come up is the, the money for this, and the, and the, the slogan is, uh, the money should follow the children, not the union. So in other words, as these kids leave, they want yeah. the money to go there, which I think is a very interesting proposition if that happens in Racine. Well, what should, should happen with too, that absolutely. referendum? Billion dollars. Maybe yeah. some of that should be going too. Well, so, public education we'll just is, uh, it, it's a mess right now. It, yeah. And and there are the, some good, there are some good areas that have yeah, a good there job, are. but yeah. Racine is just such a disaster. It's it's you a know. it's a damn shame. It really is yeah. because it, ed, educational uh, standards in in this part of the country were at one time very high, yep. we're and the best. results are good. I don't and that was pre unified actually. Yeah. And early years of unified, but now it's so people really don't know why they're voting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you are true. That's true. <laughs> well, they're they're oh, vote for boy. person now. They're not. They're not. They're not. Paying attention to a system or or how government's supposed to relate with right. people, it's it's all. Do I like that guy or do I like that guy? Yeah, it's turned into a popularity contest. Yeah. Well, let's not get too deep into it because I'm liable to reveal my personal thoughts, and that would uh, I'm okay. liable to get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> have, have, you, have, you, have you got anything else in there? Yeah, the only other the only, no, the only other thing I thought was interesting is that um, here is uh, unified sports are pushed back. But in Donna Kenosha, the sports are opening up. Yeah. So you know, it, it, I, I, you know, and and this is. I well, just, we're not going to lose any games to them this year. Not, not, this year. <laughs> not, not at that rate. We were not going to. That's it. That's we're done. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. We had a heck of a good time, didn't we, guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, was fun. boy, this is a ball. We'll see you next week. <laughs>